Well, hello. I hope everybody is having a good day out there around the world. Welcome to this live English lesson. We'll start in about 28 seconds. I hope that uh, everyone's ready to learn a little bit more about security. I think it will be an enjoyable lesson. I had a lot of fun making the lesson. Um I don't know if you guys know this but uh when I put the lesson together it's actually a fun time for me uh, as I look for all of the pictures and everything like that. I should warn you with this lesson though. Well, hello and welcome to this English lesson about security. Uh in this lesson we're going to look at all the things that people do to make themselves feel safe. All of the things that we do because even though it would be nice to think we live in a really safe world, sometimes the world isn't safe. Depending on where you live, uh it depends a lot on uh a lot of factors um and sometimes as humans we think of ways to protect ourselves. So, this lesson will be about all the things we do to prevent theft, the things we do to prevent crime, the things that we do to prevent getting mugged when we're walking down a city street. So, this lesson will be all about security, all about the things we do in order to stay safe as we go through our daily lives. Before we get started though, a few things I must tell you. Number one, um I uh noticed there's lightning in the distance. So, I hope the power doesn't go out during this live stream. There is a possibility that uh, a storm is gonna go past just as we start the lesson. I can see lightning in the distance. Uh and then secondly, I just want to welcome you all here. Welcome to this English lesson about security. Welcome to Key Park and Lolly Lolly and Lemon Cute. Uh, Apple the Frog, Patana. I know Freddie Wolf is here. Anuat, uh, Diana, Dave, and Todd, of course, here to moderate the chat. Good to see you. Key Park, uh, Macy, Vitor, Yaroslaw, and Alexi, I know are both here. I saw both of them in the chat as well. Welcome to all of you. Welcome to Eugene as well from Etobicoke. Eugene, we're supposed to have a really hot day in Ontario today, but I wonder if the weather's going to change. They were predicting a high of 30. This morning, I saw a high of 24 in rain. So, maybe we'll have a bit of a different day. Uh hi to Zeev and Bunley and Chen and Yisu and Karma. Good to see all of you here. By the way, if you have a question during this lesson, please use the link. There's a link in the description and there will be a link in the chat uh, that you can use to ask your question. So, if you have a question about the topic, of business is they install a security system or an alarm system. A security system has a variety of components. We'll talk about all of them. You'll see in this picture here, a security system has a keypad and cameras and motion detectors and all kinds of different sensors. A security system or alarm system is something that you install in a house or install in a business so that when you aren't there, there the building can monitor if people are trying to break in or if people are trying to do something bad. So, often you will have a security system installed to protect a place of business or to protect your home. It might have surveillance cameras or security cameras. A surveillance camera or security camera doesn't always look this big. They're starting to get smaller and smaller and harder to spot. But if you look on the outside of a building and if you see something like this, we would call it a surveillance camera and I think the more common term would be to say it's a security camera. Oftentimes, if a business doesn't have an alarm system and if they get robbed, they will install an alarm system and they will install security cameras so that there's something that can record what happens when they're not there at night or when they're closed. A security camera records footage. That's how we refer to the video that's created by a security camera. If a business is robbed, the police might say, can we see your footage? Can we see the security footage from your security camera? We'd like to review the footage to see if we can see who stole whatever was stolen. So, footage is 
what we call the file created from a video camera or from a, a security camera. Alarm systems also have motion detectors. Now, many houses in Canada will have a light outside attached to a motion detector. So, if you walk up to someone's house at night, the motion detector will sense your motion. The motion detector can sense motion and it will turn on a light. Uh, a motion detector can also be connected to an alarm system. Um but I think the most common motion detector in Canada on a house is usually attached to an outdoor light so that if motion is detected, the light comes on. Because a lot of crime happens at night. When it's dark, it's easier to commit a crime, I think. I wouldn't know why because I've never committed a crime but certainly a motion detector attached to a light is a good idea. An alarm system also has a keypad and we'll talk a little bit about keypads. Maybe you work somewhere where if you're the first person at work, you need to turn off the alarm. Maybe if you're the last person at work, you need to set the alarm and you do that usually using a keypad. Along with the keypad, you will be given a code. So, if you work in a building that has an alarm system, you will have a code like one, two, three, four. Hopefully, that's not your code. You will have a code that you punch in whenever you set the alarm or when you turn off the alarm. So, your code is a secret. Only you know it and you use that to either set the alarm or turn off the alarm. So, I just use the verb to set. This is how we talk about an alarm system. If you're in a building that has an alarm system or if your house has an alarm system, when you leave, you set the alarm. So, you punch in your code one, two, three, four. By the way, that's 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 not my alarm system code or my pin code for my phone. One, two, three, four is a bad code. You should have something far more complex but when you set an alarm, that's the verb we use to set. We might also say that you need to punch in your code. So, you're not punching with your fists uh but you're punching in your code with your finger. I've used this verb already just a minute ago. When I whenever I talk about an alarm system, you set the alarm by punching in your code. If you're leaving work with another person, you might say um just a minute, I- I'll punch in my code and set the alarm. That would be a common thing to say to someone. To set off. So, this is what happens when an alarm is armed or an alarm is set. If a security system has been set and someone breaks into the building, maybe they break a window or they use um a pry bar to open a door, um then the alarm is set off. Usually, there's an alarm like an actual audible alarm. So, it's like burp, burp, burp. That's my alarm noise for today. But when a criminal tries to break into a house or building, if it has an alarm system, they will set off the alarm. So, that is when the alarm goes off and usually the alarm system will contact a security company. Usually, when you have an alarm system, you pay a security company to monitor uh, your house or your place of business. We also use the verb to go off. You can hear the alarm going off at that building down the street or someone broke into the jewelry store and you can hear the alarm going off. Whenever you break into somewhere with an alarm system, you will set off the alarm but you can also describe it as saying the alarm is going off or if you open that door, the alarm is going to go off and that usually refers to like the sound that you've set off the alarm that the alarm is going to go off. So, a few more basic vocabulary words. This is a lock. Whenever you want to make something secure, you put a lock on it. This is a standard lock. This lock takes a key. There's also something called a combination lock. A combination lock is very common in schools. Students at my school have a locker, a small little cabinet where they can keep their belongings and most students have a combination lock on their locker. I say most because 99% of students keep their locker locked with a combination lock 
but some can't be bothered and so they leave it unlocked. That's always a bad idea. Whenever we talk about something being locked, we sometimes say it's under lock and key. So, if someone was to say to you, where are you keeping all your money? You could say, my money's in the bank or my money's in the basement under lock and key which means you have it locked in a box. <laughs> you should always keep your money in the bank though. Don't keep your money in a box under lock and key but it is a common English verb uh, or a common English phrase that we use when we describe something that's locked up. Um a lot of people who have jewelry keep it under lock and key. Maybe they keep it in a a locked box somewhere in their house. There's also a kind of lock called a bike lock. This is a special lock that you use just for bicycles. A bike lock looks like this. Let's make it a bit bigger. It's usually some kind of combination lock although it might be a lock that uses a key as well but a bike lock is something you put on your bike so that people don't steal your bike. Uh bike theft is pretty high in most cities. If you don't lock up your bike with a bike lock, there's a good chance that your bike will be stolen. Hey, let's do some questions here. I'm curious to see what kind of questions people ask. Uh we're going to go with the first question from Ruslan. By the way, if you're new here, if you're one of the 300 people watching, I teach the lesson for about 10 minutes. I answer questions for 10 minutes. Then I get back to the lesson. So, stick around. Don't leave because the lesson will start again in about nine or 10 minutes. Ruslan though says, hi, dear teacher Bob. Is it popular to have security cameras in houses in Canada? Does robbery happen in your area? Have a nice weekend, sir. So, as to the second question, yes, there is theft in my area. What's usually stolen, uh people steal things like four wheelers. So, you know like um it's an ATV, an all train vehicle like the fun one where you sit with one person. Those get stolen a lot. Motorcycles get stolen a lot and trailers get stolen a lot. Trailer is something you put behind your vehicle. Um so, yes, there is theft and security cameras are becoming more and more popular in Canada. Uh I think because the price keeps coming down. So, people are starting to install more security cameras and the average homeowner can figure out how to do it. Renata says, are you a security oriented guy? Um I lock my vehicles. I think I am, Renata. I think I'm fairly safety conscious. Um I don't want things stolen. So, I do all of the normal things that normal people do. Keep things locked um and those types of things. Uh Yaroslav has the next question. Morning, the wisest teacher, Bob. What's what is the security is for Canadians? Have a great live stream and weekend ahead. So, I would say security for Canadians would be knowing you can go through your day without someone trying to rob you or commit a crime or take your stuff. All of that stuff would be security. So, we like to live in a safe and secure world. Um hi, I'm Bobby says, what would life be like with little security? I don't know. That's a good question. I think there are people that do live in parts of the world where there isn't very much security. There are people that live in larger cities even in Canada where um maybe it's a bit of a dangerous neighborhood that can happen. Uh I don't know what life would be like. It wouldn't be as enjoyable. That's for sure. Um not sure about the next question. I'm gonna skip it because it's it's not quite there. Trypto Pal says, what do you do for the security of your computer? Everything. That's all I'll say about that one. I should mention this lesson is about what we would call physical security. That's security related to houses and homes and yourself. This is not about cyber security. Cyber security is when you put antivirus software on your computer. So, um this lesson will not deal with cyber security. I'm gonna skip the next one because it's about yeah, it's about a case that happened close to me when I was younger. Not to me. So, I'm gonna skip it because it's not a nice story but to answer the person who was asking it, yes, I do remember that case. It was very, very hard. 
Uh, let's see here. From Apple the Frog. Hello, Mr. Bob. How are you? My question is, do security guards only guard people or they do sometimes something else? Oh, or they do something else too. Sorry, I can't read today. Thanks for your answer and have a nice day. So, a bodyguard guards people. A security guard usually guards a business. Maybe a house but usually a security guard guards a business uh, or a school or some other building. So, definitely security guard guards things. Bodyguard would guard people. Sometimes famous people will hire a bodyguard. Henry from Taiwan says, hi, teacher Bob. Do you think mobile payment is secure enough to use for banking? Thanks a lot. Uh, I hope so because uh, I use my phone and I use my uh, Fitbit to pay for things sometimes. So, I hope it's very very secure. Um Juliana. Hi, Bob. Hope you are good. Does security have a plural form? What about the word securities? Cheers. So, interestingly enough, security refers to keeping people and places safe from crime. Securities refers to things you invest your money in. So, it's a bit of a different word when it becomes plural. So, you should look that up. Look up the word securities and it's a more of a financial term. Um Eric says, cheaper is to buy, B-U-Y, we need to add a U, buy a dog as a security device combining it with home insurance. Dogs are definitely a good thing to have around. Uh dogs are very very protective. Noriko says, can we say type or press push instead of punch in my code? Generally, when there's a keypad with just numbers, I almost always say punch in. Um I punch in my code. I'm not sure if Brent's here. I know Brent was here earlier. Maybe Brent can comment on that. When I set the alarm system at work, I punch in my code. I don't say press in or type in or push in. I almost I would always say punch in. I just need to punch in my code. Yep. Might be different in different parts of the world though. Chris Nelson says, it's not a question. I just wanna say I love you. You are the best English teacher. Well, thank you, Chris, for those kind words. Um I appreciate it. Uh Leticia, I don't know why I tried but I can't become a member. Membership isn't available in every country. So, you might be living in a country where you can't sign up. Freddie the French, he says, hi, Bob. Hope you're doing well. I'm roasting under 33 degrees Celsius. That's crazy. Could you tell us about security to fight against high heat without AC? (laughs) Thanks to you. Put a wet cloth on your neck or on your forehead. That is what I would suggest and get a fan. Those are the two things that could help you a lot. Hey, let's get back to the lesson. I do wanna say hi to the 379 people watching. It's good to have you here. Um I'm a little nervous because it's still there's a lot of lightning in the distance. So, if the if the lesson ends suddenly, it simply means the power went out here but I'll try to keep going uh quickly. But anyways, if you're new here, click that subscribe button. It makes me happy. That's what it's for. It's a button that makes <laughs> Bob the Canadian happy. Two locks. So, let's talk about the verbs associated with locks. When you have a lock or when you have a lock on your door, you lock the door. That's the verb you use. When I leave for work, I lock the door. When I get out of my car, I lock my car. When I come home from work, I unlock my door. When I come out of the grocery store, I unlock my car. So, you lock and you unlock. As simple as that. Another thing people might buy for security or might install is a gate. So, remember, we're talking about physical security. There are things you can do besides locking your house that can help protect your house and keep you secure. One is to have a gate. Here is a gate that you have to go through in order to get to the end of this dock. So, this person wants their dock to be secure. Maybe they have an expensive boat at the end sometimes. So, you need to uh go through this gate and the gate's probably locked. Although you could probably just swim around it, couldn't you? <laughs> Sometimes people will install a fence. So a fence is any kind of barrier like this. Usually a fence is hard to climb. Sometimes a fence is short and people install the fence uh so people know that they don't want them to come onto their property. But sometimes they make the fence super tall 
so that it's hard for people to get onto their property. Sometimes a fence is just decorative. When I say decorative, it means it's a short fence and people installed it because it looks nice. But sometimes people install a fence uh and it's very tall and it's to prevent people from entering. And then the most common kind of fence that I've seen uh in Canada is called a chain link fence. I don't know if this type of fence is familiar to you. A lot of businesses have chain link fence around them. So, this type of fence is made out of steel uh usually stainless steel or galvanized steel. A chain link fence is a fence you can see through but it's very difficult to climb over it and often a chain link fence will have barbed wire along the top. Barbed wire is this wire you see at the very top of this fence. So, this is a chain link fence. This is barbed wire at the top. It's wire where if you tried to climb over, you would hurt yourself because it would poke you. So, uh a lot of times there's barbed wire at the top. Another thing people do and this is a simple thing you can do in order to have more security on your property is to have good outdoor lighting. Um when you have lights on outside at night, it prevents people from committing crime. It's a deterrent we would say. So, when you walk up to a house at night, when the lights are on, you feel safer. When the lights are on outside of your house, there's um just this ability to see uh it can be a little scary at night if there's no light. Sometimes uh you'll hear a sound or maybe you're a little bit scared of the dark still but certainly outdoor lighting is a great way to light up the outdoors and to feel a little more secure and a little safer. You might even go so far as to put bars on your windows. I think someone in the chat mentioned this earlier. I think Eugene mentioned it. Sometimes uh bars on windows is a good way to prevent theft. In a lot of cities, businesses and even apartments will often have bars on windows on the first floor or the ground floor. So, if you are on the second floor, it's less likely that someone's going to climb up and try to get in your window but often businesses and even apartment buildings will have bars on the windows on the first floor just so that at ground level, the windows that people can just walk up to, there's a little more of a barrier. You know, you can't just break the window and climb in. There's actual bars there that prevent you from doing that. And then as well, we have different kinds of locks. In this picture, I would call this the basically the door lock. The normal door lock is right there but this door also has what's called a deadbolt. A deadbolt is a large piece of metal. You can kind of see it in the end there that slides out which makes it even harder to open the door. If a door only has this lock and you kick it really really hard, you probably could eventually break the door open but if you also have a deadbolt, it makes it a lot more difficult to open the door. So, a deadbolt is any type of metal bolt or um piece of metal that slides out with a key and it's an additional measure for securing your door so that you feel safer. And then along with that, there's also something called a door chain. This is something that I only usually see when I'm at a hotel. Often, a hotel door will have a door chain or another type of lock that you can flip so that you can feel a little more secure when you're staying at a hotel. The nice thing about a door chain is it lets you open the door a little bit without opening it completely. So, let's say the doorbell rings and you unlock the door but you leave the door chain on and you open the door a little bit and then you're like, oh, it's the pizza guy. Then you take the chain off and open it and then you're able to um get whatever the pizza guy has brought to you. Probably yummy, yummy pizza. Hey, for the sake of um efficiency, I'm going to switch to questions five minutes early. I'm trying to uh get this lesson. Can you tell I'm going quicker than normal? <laughs> I'm trying to get this lesson done quickly because I feel like 
it's going to rain and we're going to have a really, really severe storm here. So, I'm switching to members only mode right now. I'll also answer questions from the form. If you have a question about the lesson, I'm happy to answer it. I do wanna say hi to the 442 people watching. If you're new here, don't forget to click the subscribe button and uh, to all my members, all the people whose names are in green in the chat, thank you so much for being members. You are awesome. Um, let me start with a question from here while I wait for members to pop a question into the chat. Ruben says, hi, Bob. How are you doing? Good, by the way. Please, what's the difference between the words security and safety? Which situation should I use each of them? So, safety is a broader term. I think when you talk about security, like you want to feel secure in your home. You want to feel secure when you go walking at night in your city. Um, it refers to that you don't want a crime to happen but safety would mean the same thing. I think for this topic, you can also almost use them interchangeably. Although, safety also refers to um when you're walking, you don't wanna trip and fall. You wanna feel safe. You don't wanna slip on ice. So, security is very much about feeling safe from crime whereas safety would be feeling safe from crime and accidents and other things as well. That's how I would define it. Freddie Wolf says, Bob, tu disais que you spoke about motion security camera. So, what is the difference with the word movement? Thanks. So, I think there's motion detectors. There's cameras that have motion detectors connected as well. Um and then there's lights that have motion detectors connected. So, um I guess basically, they've created a sensor that can sense motion. And that will either tell a camera, a security camera to start recording or it will tell a light to come on. Those are the two things that it will do or it'll just set off the alarm. That happens too. Adi the Thai says, Renata, I'm sorry, I don't understand. So, Renata and Adi having a conversation. Zeev says, as part of my job, I used to work as a security guard and I hated every moment. So, I had a friend who worked as a security guard when we were a lot younger And his biggest complaint was that he had to work at night and he had to work on the weekends. So, he enjoyed the job. It paid well but we never saw him because he was always working. When we were out camping or hanging out or just at someone's house on a Friday night, he was at work. So, and he said it was very, very boring that he spent a lot of time just walking around checking stuff. Uh Kimmy and Kiwi from Korea say, good morning, Bob. I saw a phrase security breach. What does it mean and can you say breach the security by using breach as a verb? Thanks. No. The second part, you can't. Um well, no, you could. They breached our security. Yeah. Let me take that back. First of all, a security breach is often when someone has gotten into your computer or into the computer systems at a business. So, they had a security breach at work. Someone hacked into their computers. It can also mean like in a war or on a base, there's like a a security breach. Someone's gotten onto the military base. And yes, you could say that people, they try to breach the security or they've breached the security. So, um, Lolly Lolly says, sorry, I asked a question in the forum but you have already answered the question. I'm so quick. Sometimes, I can sense the questions before they happen. Um, Poe says, hi, how are you? I can understand almost all your content but I can't understand other English speaker channels. How to improve this issue? You need to watch a lot of other people. So, I do love it that all of you watch all of my lessons and videos. That's awesome but part of learning this language is that you need to train your ear to understand other people. So, you need to spend a lot of time watching other YouTube videos. This is the opposite of what most YouTubers say. Most YouTubers really want you to watch their videos but for your own sake, if you really want to improve your English, you have to watch other people as well and listen to them. It's just very, very important. Uh Sam the Taiwanese said, oh, hi, Sam. Good to see you. Hi, teacher Bob. How are you doing? Is the security system prevalent in your region? More and more people are getting security systems but mostly 
people are getting security cameras. I think it's very easy. It's cheaper and it's easy to buy and install security cameras. So, I think more and more people are starting to do that. Freddie Wolf, hey Bob, about the bars of the windows on the fifth floor can be useful. We never know. Spider-Man could come and climb the wall. Yes, you could have a superhero with superpowers come but uh it might not be worth the investment. I don't know. And Spider-Man, not sure he's a thief, is he? I don't know. He got in trouble in the last movie though. Um speak English with this guy. Hey, Brett, good to see you. If I was a security guard, I'd want my job to be boring. Yes, that's a good point. If you were a security guard and your job was boring, that's a good thing. If you were a security guard and your job was exciting, that would mean people were trying to steal stuff every night or other things. Uh Foxy Caddy says, I'm in Toronto right now for my first time. I'm enjoying being in Canada. It's a gorgeous experience for me. Well, you came at a really good time, Foxy Caddy. Um it is beautiful. The weather's beautiful. The trees all have leaves on them. If you're in the right spot, you'll see tulips uh, blooming. Very, very nice. Uh Noriko says, motion detectors always scare me. Yeah, motion detectors are interesting. Um Because a little red light comes on when it senses motion. So, we have motion detectors in all our classrooms at school and then sometimes the students are like, what's that little white thing and why does the red light come on? And then I usually explain that it's it's a device to check if they're working hard or not and if and if the red light comes on, it means they're not doing their work. I I just make a joke about it. Um Island Resort says, I love watching your lesson teacher Bob but for me, I will just watch the teacher Bob channel English lesson most of the time. Yes, no problem. It's fun for me to create a variety of lessons and I'm sure it's fun to choose which ones you want to watch. Giovanni, it's so great how technology has backed up security and light capturing everything and solving old crimes that were still unsolved besides keeping people off our doors and stealing our packages. I didn't mention that but porch pirates are a problem right now. So, this is what happens. Many people order things from Amazon or they order things online and the delivery person will leave it by the door if no one's home and then someone will drive by and see the package and run and steal it. I think that's one of the reasons why people are installing more and more security cameras to stop the porch pirates from stealing their stuff. Audie says, hi, teacher Bob. Is it true the security guard, there are more powerful than the police in their area like the security guard in the mall? Thanks. No, generally in Canada, security guards have less power than the police. They have a lot of power to do certain things. I think they're able to detain someone if they are stealing stuff from a store Um, but definitely police have way more power in Canada. In the US, it might be different. I'm not 100% sure. Uh let's see here. Shin says, one time I locked the house but didn't know that I left the key inside the house. The spare key is in my car but the car key was also in the house. Yes, so you tried to be secure and you tried to do the right thing but you ended up causing a problem for yourself. So, that's not very, very fun. Um hey, I'm gonna turn off members only. Thank you once again, all of you who are members. You guys are awesome. Let's go back to subscriber chat and let me answer a few more questions and we will get back to the lesson. Uh I'm gonna skip the next question because it's not about and one's about antivirus. So, hello from France. Can I use the adjective safe and secure interchangeably? Merci, Bob. So, I do think as I was doing this lesson that when I feel safe, It means that I feel like no one's going to rob me but I also feel like I'm not going to trip and fall because the path is uneven. So, safe to me is like a general term. Secure always means for me that no one's going to come and take my wallet or something like that. Yes. Hopefully, that makes sense. Next question from Alexi. Do you use car alarms in Canada? When I visited Vancouver, I rarely heard car alarm signals thanks in advance. Yes, pretty much every vehicle has a car alarm. If a vehicle is locked in Canada, there's a good chance if you try to open it that the car alarm will go off. Brent says, mall cops have very little authority. Good to know, Brent. Thank you. Um what was I gonna look at? I had asked a question earlier. 
Yeah, let's get back to let's get back to the lesson everybody so that we can wrap up the formal part of the lesson just in case the power goes out. Let's do that. A peephole. I had to <laughs> I had to look this one up because this is what I call it and I didn't know if that was the real word but if you live in an apartment or if you're at a hotel, you will most likely have a peephole in your door so that if someone rings the doorbell or knocks, you can look through the little hole to see who's there. When you live in a house though, you usually don't have a peephole because most people have windows on the front of their house. So, if someone knocks or rings the doorbell, you can look out the window or you can peek out the window but a peephole is a tiny thing. Oh, I spilled some tea here. Is a tiny thing that you often have in a door of an apartment building or hotel so that you can look out the door if someone knocks. We also have car alarms. Almost every car in the last 10 or 15 years has a key where you can lock the car and also has a minimal system where if you try to open it, the car will start to honk but you can if you want install a more expensive car alarm. Uh some people do that. They buy an expensive car alarm for their car. Uh something that's a little better than what comes with their car. Maybe you are worried that someone's going to try and take your wallet or your purse when you go for a walk. So, you might learn self-defense. Self-defense would be when you go and take classes to learn how to defend yourself from an attacker. Maybe you learn karate. Uh, karate. Sorry. I always said karate but karate is how English speakers say it or jujitsu and hopefully if these are words from your own language, I'm not saying them wrong in your language. Uh, but maybe you will take some sort of class to learn how to defend yourself. Uh to learn self-defense. By the way, I took self-defense classes a long time ago and they said the best defense is to run away. That is the best way to defend yourself. If you can run away and get somewhere safe, that's the best way to defend yourself. You might carry pepper spray. You might when you go jogging or when you go for a run or when you go for a walk. If you're walking in a place where you don't feel secure, where you don't feel safe, you might take pepper spray. Pepper spray is something you spray at someone and if it gets near their eyes, it makes the their eyes so they can hardly um keep them open and they start crying. So, pepper spray is one way to defend yourself and one way to feel more secure when you go for a walk. If you know you have your pepper spray with you, um that's a good thing to do. By the way, I just noticed in the chat, self-defense also could be called martial arts. So, thank you for mentioning that. English vibes, martial arts or self-defense. Uh learning how to defend yourself. And someone mentioned this earlier. Sometimes a good way to feel secure or have some security is to just get a dog. Dogs bark when strangers come on your property. Dogs love their owners and if someone tries to do something to their owner, the dog might get very very angry. It might bark. It might even bite the person who's doing that. Most people just have a dog. They would just say, oh, we have a dog. You know, just for a little bit of security, we have a dog. But if you have dogs at a business, we call them guard dogs. Okay? So, on our farm, we have two dogs, Oscar and Walter. I wouldn't call them guard dogs but they do guard the property really well. They do bark when people come and Oscar in particular can get a little bit angry when strangers are on the property. So, we wouldn't call them a guard dog but if Oscar's job was to uh work at like a junkyard and and stop people from stealing things, we would call him a guard dog. And then a few people have asked questions about security guards. So, security guards are people who are hired to protect buildings, businesses and that type of thing. So, if you had a business and you wanted to make sure no one robbed the business at night, you might hire a security guard. That person would work through the night They would keep an eye on things. They would make sure no one stole anything Uh, and if anyone tried to steal things, they would yell or call the police or do whatever they're supposed to do. So, security guard and as we mentioned earlier, I don't have a slide for this. 
if you hire someone to protect you like if I was really famous and needed someone to protect me we would call that person a bodyguard. So, celebrities will often have a bodyguard or two bodyguards with them when they go places to protect them from people who want to um I don't know do harm or just get too close to them or whatever. They might hire a bodyguard for that. So, hey, I did that lesson really fast and again, (laughs) I hope I didn't talk too fast. I tried to talk slowly and clearly. There were less slides than normal as well but I hope you enjoyed the lesson. I'm gonna finish the last uh ten minutes or so just answering questions if there are any. Um but uh thank you so much for being here uh this long. Let's get to the questions. So, Alina says, is chain link fence called grid fence too? We don't call it that here. We call it chain link fence. Often, they will install a chain link fence at the park or there might be a business that installs a chain link fence around the edge of their property to prevent people from stealing things. So, maybe in other English speaking parts of the world, it has a different name but uh we definitely call it chain link fence here in Canada. Brent, do you guys call it chain link fence down there in the US? That standard woven type of fence that's everywhere? I'm sure they probably do. Uh let's see here. Um So, this is from Valeria. Hello, Mr. Bob. Which things do you use to secure your own house and please give me advice how to secure a house from illegal entry. So, I again at the beginning of the lesson, I mentioned that one of the best ways to have good security is to not talk about your security. So, I'm not gonna comment what we do here to keep things safe and secure. But what I will say is this. Having outdoor lighting at night, number one. Number two, maybe buy one or two security cameras if you're really concerned. Really good idea. Number three, have a dog. Dogs are just awesome. Can you imagine what it would be like for a criminal when they're trying to break into a house and all of a sudden uh, they hear a dog barking, a really angry dog? Yes. And then Brent says, yes, we call it the same. So, chain link fence, that very common uh that very common type of fence that you see almost everywhere in the world. Hey folks, by the way, this might be a record for the shortest lesson ever. I'm done answering all the questions from the form. There are no questions left. I'll answer one more from Sammy that just popped up. Hi, Bob. How's it going? What is the meaning of regular basis? When you do something on a regular basis, you do it on all the time. I do a live stream on a regular basis. I do one every Friday. I go to work on a regular basis. Monday through Friday, I go to work. So, when you do something regularly, when it's common for you to do it um every day or every week, you say that you do it on a regular basis. So, again, that's the end of the lesson everybody. Thank you so much for hanging out. I know it wasn't even quite 45 minutes. I hope people aren't like coming late and they're gonna come in 10 minutes and and miss the lesson completely but uh we got it done. The power didn't go out. It is really dark outside right now though. When I look at the horizon, you can see that rain is approaching very quickly. Uh anyways, I'm gonna wrap this up instead of hanging around too long. Um when my classes at school end early, the students are usually really really happy but I know when the live stream ends early, people are sad. So, sorry about that. Anyways, let me say bye to people. Uh bye to Brent from Speak English with this guy. You know, I mentioned you need to listen to different English speakers. Go watch some of his videos. Uh there's some great stuff over there. Uh bye to Lemon Cute and Gorav and Phalanx and Adi. Bye Lolly. Bye Sophia. Uh bye Freddie Wolf. Bye Linda. Bye Lemon Cute. Bye Wanda. Uh bye Adi again. Bye Todd and Dave. Thanks for hanging out. Uh bye to Mike and Mr. Supercar and Sandeep and Key Park and all of the other one, all the other people who are here. Bye, P-Pat. Bye, Pedro. Uh bye, Eugene and Sam the Taiwanese. Uh thanks for tuning in, Eugene. I wonder if Eugene has the same storm approaching. I didn't look at the radar. I'm gonna look at that for a minute. Let me look at the radar here. No. Well, maybe. It's definitely on top of us now. It might hit Eugene in a little bit. Bye, Cecilia. Uh and Alexi and Yaroslav and 
Shania and everyone else. I'm going to hit the end button now, everybody. Uh, thanks for the uh, hanging out. Thanks for learning a bit of English. Do remember this lesson will come out in a really short version in a couple days with subtitles, English subtitles. So, do come back and watch that or listen to it while you drive or when you're on the subway or listen to it while you make supper sometime next week uh just so that you get um a second a second listen is always good. Re-listening is a good thing to do. Uh have a good Friday and I'll uh Tuesday new video and I'll see you next Friday with another